Hello and welcome to this uh, slide video from the Cornish Radio Amateur Club and this is part of the Foundation series leading to the uh, Foundation license. Uh, now uh, today we're going to look at feeder requirements. So the syllabus which is our guiding light says 5A1 recall the correct cable to use for RF signals and that the coaxial cable is most widely used because of its screening properties. 5A2 says, recall that the plugs and sockets for RF, that's radio frequency, should be of the correct type and that the braid of coaxial cable must be correctly connected to minimize RF signals getting into or out of the cable. And finally, identify BNC and PL259 plugs as shown in Table 2. So quite a simple uh, syllabus um, requirement here. Uh, remember the word recall means you just have to remember that fact um, and you don't have to uh, apply it in different situations as you would if the word was understand. So this video goes a little bit further than the requirements of the syllabus and perhaps overlaps into the next video which is about antennas. So here we go. Firstly, there are two common types of feeder. The one shown there is balanced feeder, and it consists of uh, two conductors spaced evenly apart, and that spacing is maintained by insulated spacers. So that's a balanced feeder, and it's sometimes called ladder feeder. The more common type of feeder is an unbalanced feeder, and uh, there we have a coaxial cable and the central conductor uh, runs up the middle, normally um, some copper. Uh, this is surrounded by a dielectric insulator. Don't worry if you don't understand the word dielectric. Um, that becomes uh, plain in uh, subsequent um, uh, videos such as uh, the intermediate and the advanced course treatment of feeders. Um, but it is an insulator, and that is in turn surrounded by a conducting braid. Um, the braid is normally a sort of copper mesh. And then finally, outside and protecting everything is a plastic jacket. Now if we look at a cross section of a feeder, it'll look something like this. And um, there we have in graphic form the various layers and once again we've got the central conductor in the middle the dielectric insulator the conducting braid and the plastic jacket so the two conductors are the central conductor and the conducting braid now if we want to fit a plug to that feeder we have to strip back the various layers. So we start with the outside layer and strip that back the most, then strip back the uh, conducting braid, the dielectric uh, insulator, and leaving protruding the uh, central conductor. And on that we would want to fit a plug, and it could be a BNC, as shown there, or possibly a PL259. Let's have a look and see how the BNC connects to or attaches to the um, feeder. Well, here we've drawn a schematic of the BNC. You can see the metal outer in green and yellow uh, color shows the center pin of the BNC. So first of all, a locking uh, ring is a slid over the outside of the coax and then the pin is uh, slid over the central conductor and either crimped or soldered to make sure it stays firm and that there is a good electrical connection. And then finally the body of the BNC is slid over and the uh, locking nut or the um, secure, securing nut there is tightened up um, and the job is complete. And in this process, there is a good electrical connection between the braid and the outer um, metal shell 
of the BNC cable. If we want to look at a socket or a female connector, it would look something like this, and diagram diagrammatically it looks something like that. Again with the coax connecting, this time not to a pin, but to a small receptacle. Once again, the braid is securely connected to the metal outside of the connector. And once again, there's a, a securing or a, a locking nut, which tightens up um, over the um, protective uh, covering. So when the two join together, um, the plug and socket have joined the centre cores together and joined the uh, braid together, but keeping one separate from the other. And roughly speaking, the distance between the centre cord, uh, uh, the central connector and the braid has been maintained throughout the length of the connector. And that's quite important to maintain the impedance. Once again, you don't need to know about the impedance or characteristic impedance um, at this stage. So let's have a look at coaxial cable then. There it is in cross-section. And the radio energy is confined within the braid, making coax suitable for rooting through walls or laying under the ground. And the braid is at earth potential. It's arranged uh, like that in the, in the shack. And then a twin feeder. The twin feeder relies on the fact that the currents are equal and opposite and so that the fields cancel out. The performance of twin feeder can be better than coax. Anything touching the feeder, however, will have the effect of unbalancing the feeder and degrading its performance. This makes twin feeder unsuitable for passing through walls, etc. So the overall picture then is that while twin feeder can offer performance advantages in the right situation, it's a bit problematic when you have to pass it around um, uh, uh, through walls or trail it along the ground because that upsets the uh, fields around the uh, individual conductors and the way it works by having equal and opposite fields cancelling out is compromised. So generally speaking, and the syllabus refers to this, coaxial cable is the uh, more used uh, type of feeder. So remembering that coaxial cable is unbalanced and twin feeder is balanced. Let's have a look at balanced and unbalanced. Coax is unbalanced. The inner has the voltage and the outer is earthed. Coax is widely used as its outer acts as a screen. Twin feeder is balanced. Conductors have equal and opposite voltages, currents and fields. In order to connect an unbalanced feeder to a balanced antenna, e.g. connect coax to a dipole, a dipole is a balanced antenna, a transformer known as a ballon is needed. And ballon is balanced to unbalanced. It takes the BAL from balanced and the UN from unbalanced and therefore uh, is called a ballon. And that transforms a balanced a feeder to an unbalanced antenna or a an unbalanced antenna uh, unbalanced feeder to a balanced antenna if we don't use a ballon the rf currents flow on the outside braid of the coax and the screening properties of the coax are lost so quite often people say i don't bother with a ballon um, but you will get superior performance if you do use a ballon Let's have a look at the two coaxial uh, connectors. Here they are. Um, well, first of all, a wide variety of uh, connectors exist. Common RF connectors include BNC, PL259, those two we need to recognize, but also N-type, SMA, etc. So there are a lot of different types of connectors. Uh, each one has its advantages and disadvantages. But the more expensive ones 
tend to be for when we have higher frequencies and therefore we're more um, susceptible to getting loss with poor quality connectors. Ensure both the inner and outer uh, inner conductor and outer braid are assembled correctly. The continuity of the inner conductor and the braid are absolutely essential to, for the uh, correct operation of uh, coax. Poor connect condition connectors are a major cause of bad SWRs, etc. So a connector outside that hasn't been taped up and waterproofed, if it, get, if it gets water in, it can provide a reflection point and um, adversely affect the SWR, the standing wave ratio. Screening must be continuous through plugs and sockets. So you must be careful that the braid is correctly connected to the outside or the metalwork of the plug so that it carries on to the next socket. And the foundation license requires good understanding of two connectors, the BNC and the PL259. And indeed, for the practical, for the intermediate license, you are required to solder on, on fit a PL259 onto a piece of coax. So, uh, feeder requirements. Let's have a look at the syllabus again. 5A1, recall the correct cable to use for RF signals and that coaxial cable is most widely used because of its screening properties. We've covered that. We've said that because it keeps the RF uh, energy within the braid on the inside, then it's um, quite useful because it's less likely to um, interfere with other items um, and um, it's easy to route through things like walls. Whereas balanced feeder, uh, while it's straight and away from objects, it performs very well. It's easily perturbed by adjacent objects. 5A2 says, recall that plugs and sockets for RF should be of the correct type and that the braid of coaxial cable must be correctly connected to minimize RF signals getting into or out of the cable. So plugs and sockets for RF, um, we've mentioned some different types other than BNC and uh, PL259. Both those plugs have a limited frequency range and for the very high frequencies, or should I say the uh, um, uh, the extremely high frequencies or the SHF frequencies, they may not be suitable. So you might have to use different types. And they need to be correctly uh, connected to minimize RF signals getting into or out of the cable. So it's no good just twisting the braids together or when you're joining two bits of cable. You need to maintain the coaxial nature, that means one sort of circle within another circle. In other words, the braid connecting to the braid of the other cable and the centre connecting to the centre, um, but surrounding the, con the inner conductor. Identify BNC and PL259 plugs as shown in Table 2. So let's have a look at those two again. There's the BNC, uh, which is a, of the sort of bayonet type. You push it on and twist it through about uh, 45 degrees and it goes click. PL259 uh, is threaded. So you push that on and turn the, um, the collar round and round and round until it's tight. So not too much to feed us, but um, some key facts there to remember. So thank you very much indeed, and next time we will be looking at antennas.